used to get super frustrated and think, why is it that cells have to be so dramatic? There is a reason why RBCs are shaped the way they are. Neurons, one of the craziest, coolest cells that you can find in our bodies. Speckies are a type of xylem elements which help in conduction of water. Think about it. They are modified so that we can survive better. They are modified so that they can function. Hello there. Let's just have a quick chat about cells, shall we? I promise I'm not going to take too much of your time. So let's go. As biology students, probably in 11th grade or 12th grade, you must be aware by now that in multicellular organisms, be it plants or animals, numerous cells are present within the organism's body. Even in our bodies, there are many, many trillions of cells, right? Though there are trillions of cells, you may have even learnt about how in each organism's body, all of the cells are not identical. They are not of the same type. They are of many, many different shapes. They vary so much with respect to their structure, right? Think about it. Within blood itself, you have RBCs, you have WBCs. But look at both of them. They vary so much from each other with respect to their structure. While RBCs are biconcave, the WBCs are amoeboid. Think about plant cells. If you take a look at the mesophyll cells present in the leaf, you will see that they are somewhat rounded, spherical. Within the same leaf, look at the xylem elements, the trachea and the vessels, the tracheids, they are super elongated. So it often used to make me also wonder when I was younger and I learnt about all of these cell types for the first time, I used to get super frustrated and think, why is it that cells have to be so dramatic? Why can't they all be the same type? Why do I have to learn about what kind of epithelium is lining my intestine? What kind of epithelium is lining the alveoli? What kind of epithelium is lining my trachea? It's too much of work, right? I used to get super frustrated. And uh, it's actually very beautiful to think about it. The reason why any cell is shaped the way it is, is because of the kind of job it does in your body, right? So. There is a reason why RBCs are shaped the way they are. If RBCs were any other shape and not biconcave, they wouldn't be able to work so efficiently. Every cell in our body has a specific function to perform, specific role to do. RBC's job, do you know what an RBC's job is? The RBC's job is to transport respiratory gases like oxygen across different parts of our body. Now, how does RBC achieve that? It does so by allowing hemoglobin molecules to bind to the oxygen and the, then it will carry it, transport it to far off places within our body. Okay. Now, for hemoglobin to get accommodated within the RBCs, millions of hemoglobin to get accommodated within the RBCs, if RBC had a big fat nucleus sitting in the center, it would have been quite a task, right? Now that RBCs are enucleate when mature, they lose their nucleus, they have a lot of space to accommodate the hemoglobin molecules so that oxygen transport can happen more efficiently. Not just that, when RBCs have to travel, I'm sorry, transport oxygen to different tissues, they'll have to squeeze in through very, very narrow capillaries. If it had a fat, rigid shape, a spherical body, it would definitely not be able to do its job of squeezing in through the capillaries and delivering oxygen to every one of our living cells. The shape makes it do its job efficiently. If only RBCs existed in any shape but biconcave, it would not have been able to perform its job well. The reason it is shaped the way it is, is because of the kind of job that it's doing. Same goes for WBC cells. What do they do? They are involved in protecting our body from invading pathogens and foreign substances and all of that. So let's say you were riding your bicycle and you fell off and you hurt your hand, you got a wound. Now the skin barrier is broken, there are bacteria that have gained entry into your body, they have to be dealt with, they have to be fought and neutralized. For that, WBCs have to leave the bloodstream and get out to the site of infection, right? So in order to do that, WBCs will have to squeeze in through the squamous epithelial tissue and go to the site where pathogen attack has happened. If they had a very fat rigid shape, they could not change their shape, they could not become amoeboid, then these cells leaving the blood uh, capillary or the blood vessel and getting out to the site where infection has happened would not have become possible. The reason they are amoeboid is because that helps them reach the site of infection very quickly and neutralize the pathogens. If they are not shaped that way, they cannot effectively guard our body, right? Talking about columnar epithelial cells, 
you can find columnar epithelial cells in regions where a lot of secretion is happening or absorption is happening. Because the cells are elongated like that, you get a lot of apical surface through which secretion can happen or absorption can happen. Like there is scope for additional specialization at the apical part of the cells where structures like villi or uh, not villi, microvilli or cilia can get attached, right? So, this provides additional surface area for secretion and absorption. Its job is that. So, it helps it in performing its job well. Talking about neurons, one of the craziest, coolest cells that you can find in our bodies. It has a crazy hairstyle with an extremely long tail. The reason these neurons are shaped the way they are is because of the job they do. They obtain their information or receive their information through the dendrites. The more branching there is, it can receive information in a better way. What is the reason for it to have a very long tail in the form of an axon? One neuron itself can transmit that information to very very long distances and it can happen very quickly. That is the reason why neurons are shaped the way they are. Now moving on to tracheids. Tracheids are a type of xylem elements which help in conduction of water. For conduction of water to happen against gravity and plants, you don't need a cell that offers too much resistance. Since it's happening against gravity, it's already quite a task for the plants. If it is in any other shape other than this elongated shape, it makes it even more difficult for the plant to transport water. Also, another advantage of it being elongated is many cells can align one on top of another to and form a continuous tube and make sure water transport becomes easier. So, because of its shape, it's able to do its job pretty well. Talking about mesophyll cells, mesophyll cells are kind of spherical or oval, I would say. Why are they the way they are? Because in mesophyll tissues, there's abundant chloroplast and there's a lot of photosynthesis taking place. These are tissues that are present in the leaves of plants. You know, it's important for the chloroplast to function. They should receive carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. By chloroplast mesophyll tissue, mesophyll cells being spherical like that, you can see how a lot of intercellular spaces are created between the cells. Within those intercellular spaces, there will be air. And from that air, it becomes easier for carbon dioxide to diffuse into the cells for photosynthesis to take place. If they were very tightly arranged with respect to each other with no spaces, if they were all polygonal and there was no space, photosynthesis would have become very difficult. So, every time you think about why do cells have to be so dramatic, why can't they just all be the same type, think about it. They are modified so that we can survive better. They are modified so that they can function better. I hope that was helpful. If you want to watch more such videos, then head over to our brand new PW Neat English YouTube channel for which the link is given in the description below. I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye. Take care.